Conference as we begin our time together this morning. Uh, we will have Bible study on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. We're continuing with our study of parables. Uh, we're going to do as many, cover as many parables as we can until, I don't know, like the third or fourth Wednesday, uh, Tuesday of May. Uh, then we're going to break for the summer. And that'll be it for the study of parables. So if you want to catch some parables, head out in the next few weeks for Tuesday night Bible study. Um, we'll, we'll probably start our outdoor worship service. We'll probably move our worship outside for Sunday morning. Um, as soon into May as it gets warm enough to do so. So as soon as, as, soon as we have like a Sunday that looks like it's going to be 70 degrees or warmer that day, uh, you know, for a, tre a trend in that direction, we're, we'll move outside. Uh, and I'm hoping to... Um, gradually, as the weeks progress, as we're outside, move to a more uh, normal form of our worship format. So we'll do a little bit longer, maybe a little more singing. Uh, we'll see how it goes. That's what, that's what the hope is. Coming up in May, in the end of May, is our Eastern PA Annual Conference. All the information you need is in there, including a link to get to the web page uh, at the conference where you can register and you can find out all the information how you can watch the live stream sessions and things like that. Uh, we have a party coming up on June 12th, 12th and uh, Gary and Pam are hosting that party and they are requesting, uh, if you're planning on attending that party, that you get your RSVP to them. Um, the, the, their, uh, they need to get a head count uh, for that date uh, in a few weeks. So if you could, uh, uh, RSVP uh, for that June 12th party, 90th birthday party. It's going to be good. So. Uh, and then August 6th through 8th uh, the, are the dates for the Laity Academy. They've been announced. I don't know anything more than the dates at this point, but those are the dates. And I uh, hope, hope that you will keep an eye on, uh, you can keep an eye on your bullets and we'll announce details as soon as we get them. Uh, do, you have, do we have any other announcements? Do we have newsletters yeah. newsletter stuff. Uh, I need it by Tuesday, I said. Okay. So if you have anything uh, that you wanted to get into the newsletter, you want to get that to Linda by Tuesday. Yeah, we're doing like a little survey of how, how COVID has affected you. So if you didn't get an email from me, you can fill it out with, on one of these little papers I have. Okay. Um, All right. Thank you. Any other announcements? then let's continue in our worship with a moment for reflection. shall renew their strength. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. He restores my soul, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. They shall run and not be weary. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. They shall walk and not faint. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our hymn this morning is The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. All the words are in your bulletin, uh, whether you're looking at the bulletin online or in person. Uh, if you're using a hymnal, it's number 138. In hymnal, and we're going to sing verses 1 through 3 and verse 6.
what you will find printed in your bulletin. Loving Shepherd, you know our names, you care for us. When we face darkness and death, walk beside us. When we hunger for your love, fill us with your presence. When we are fearful, feed us at the table. May we dwell in the house of goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. Amen. And you may be seated. John 10, 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. chapter 3, and we're going to hear verses 16 through 18, and also 23 and 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And this is, the, this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and 
he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The Five Love Languages is a book written in 1992 by psychologist Dr. Gary Chapman. It's one of those books that I never read, but I feel like I did, because copies of pages and, and resources from that book were so prevalent in like every meeting, every church meeting that I went to in the early years of my ministry career, that if you stacked all of those up, they would be at least as thick as the book itself, maybe a couple of times as thick as the book itself. I don't remember whether, whether it was an overtly Christian book or not, although a verse from 1 Corinthians 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love, is printed right on the front cover of the book. Plus, you can buy it from ChristianBook.com, so it's got to be a Christian book. <laughs> now, Jesus must have known the five love languages and how to use them, even though he didn't have that book to tell him how to do it. In fact, lots of people in the Christian church, and even hold on to your hats, people outside have practiced genuine love for others without ever reading that book. Now, I'm being a little facetious and dismissive of the book, but I should note that I have, in fact, found the five love languages concept uh, to be helpful. It helped me understand that my own preferred way of experiencing love or receiving love uh, is time spent. You want, to, you want to show me that you love me and appreciate me? Spend some time with me. That's, that's the way to, to do that. The willingness to spend time with me communicates care and compassion. But the five love languages also help me to understand that the language I prefer to receive, time spent, is also the one that I default to when I want to communicate love. Right? So, you know, if I'm looking to spend time with you, that's, that's communication from me that I uh, care about you and love you. However, that may not, my preferred receiving love language may not be the preferred language of the recipient. Right? You may not want me to spend time with you, please. <laughs> I mean, I love you, Jim, but it's okay. Joy's preferred love language might be gifts given or words of affirmation, or windows washed. I made that last one up. It's not on the slide. So yes, it can be helpful. But just like I made up window washing as a love language, Dr. Chapman made up his category. Now, I assume he did research and, and had at least some uh, evidential basis for his categorizing of five love languages, but the, the fact is that he took the evidence and made up five categories to fit the evidence that he saw. In reality, there's way more than five. Or maybe there's just one. Dr. Chapman might be a terrific psychologist, but when it comes to the five love languages, he's really just a guy who came up with a really excellent idea for a book that would sell. The language he really understood is the human tendency to categorize things and make them into a to-do list. We, we loves us some categorizing and making a to-do list. As evidence, let me point out that the book sold four times what the publisher expected in its first year. Four times. That's amazing. But that was only the beginning. The sales skyrocketed after that. That was 2002, and sales skyrocketed after four times the publisher's expectation. The book has been on the New York Times bestseller list since, get this, 2009. Twelve years. 
Now, there are a lot of books on the New York Times bestseller list, but this is one of them. It may not be one of his love languages, but I'm sure that Dr. Chapman understands the message sent by the public in the language of royalties paid. And we do love us some lists made. That's one of the ways we express our love language through concepts. We make lists out of them. But no matter how many lists you make, no matter how well you understand your preferred love language or that of your beloved, and no matter how many times you read Dr. Chapman's book or anyone else's, love is still hard, hard work. Nobody understood this better than Jesus of Nazareth. His disciples knew that he loved them because he demonstrated it. Over and over, Jesus demonstrated that he loved them. He spent time with them. He allowed them to share in his sacred mission. He literally washed their feet at one point. There's three different love languages right there. And of course, he went to the cross for them. He went to the cross for us, which is a love language all its own. Now, obviously, there's no way for me to be sure of this, but I would guess that whenever those 12 apostles, those 12 guys, heard the word love for the rest of their lives, they pictured Jesus. As I said, that's just my guess. But in the case of John, the apostle, and the elder, it's a highly educated guess. He almost says as much in his first letter when he writes, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. A direct association of love with the person of Jesus, established by the work, the actions, the demonstration of love by Jesus. And then John says, so we ought to do likewise, lay down our lives for one another. Now, Jesus and John lived in a world where literally laying down one's life for their loved ones was often required. Jesus did it. Most of John's fellow apostles did it, too. And John, though laying down his life wasn't literally required of him, John spent his last days in exile for the sake of a beloved community very much a laying aside of one's life for the sake of his beloved. So while the literal laying down of life might not be necessary, the willingness to do so certainly was. That is, I think, what Jesus and John are both saying. It's the attitude. It's the lifestyle the putting aside of one's own plans, agendas, hopes, fears, dreams, in order to express grace and compassionate concern for those we claim to love. Now, that's a fairly provocative statement, so I feel like some caution is needed here. If someone is requiring you to figuratively lay down your life for them as a condition of being in a relationship with them, that person is not loving you. That person is abusing you. In that case, love may require of you that you lay down your pretext of a relationship with that person. That exception, however, does not invalidate the rule. Love is characterized by the willingness to lay down our agenda, comfort, hopes, and fears for the sake of others. Now, I, I thought about what kind of example share with the, with the church to illustrate my point. But as I look around the room, I am reminded of so many examples 
just represented by the people in this room, done by the people in this room, that to pick out just one or two would probably embarrass whoever did it. And I'm just thinking of like the last six months. The way I've seen the people of this church love others, like John said in his letter, not in words, but in actions and in truth, it gives me hope. We live in a world that needs hope. Now the world doesn't often see, or maybe it's more appropriate to say that the world doesn't often notice people like you loving others in the name of Jesus. The world is more apt to notice when we fail, which because we're human, we will do. And unfortunately, the Christian community gives the world plenty of examples of something other than love. But the more people like you continue to put aside your own agendas for the sake of others, especially when those others do not believe, or do not look, or do not live like you do, the more people like you continue to put aside your own agendas for the sake of others like them, the more the world will hear, I love you, in a language that they understand. Let's pray. God, whatever our preferred way of receiving love is. You did it. You did it in Jesus. You do it in the way that you provide for us every day of our lives. We pray, God, that we would take up that same mission, that same intent, that we would love like you love, Lord God. That we would love those who are here in the body of Christ with us, that, that, and that we would love those who are not. That we would love those who look like us, and that we would love those who do not. That we would love those who choose to live like we do, and those that do not. We pray, God, that you would help us by the Spirit, as St. John the Elder said, by the Spirit, to walk in love, to obey the commandment of Jesus, to love one another. And the more we do that, God, the more glory you get, and the more the world will understand that we do indeed love like Jesus.
joys and a concern. First joy is our son Mark Ward Walford, the physician mm -hmm. at PTI. And so if there are three Ds, you guys are going to have to be seeking another physician in another company right now. Our friend Linda, who had the surgery, is doing well and is, but, so that's a joy. Um, but there, there's a huge incision and uh, so there's still some pain. Mm -hmm. And they're waiting for the, uh, the results of the testing to know whether And then the other concern is uh, my niece's husband, Ira. Ira had uh, lymphoma and has been treated multiple times for it. And about a year ago, two months ago, he had, had a new experimental treatment and everything was going really well. And then the past two weeks, he noticed a lump in his leg and they tested it. And it looks like it's probably the lymphoma back. So prayers for Ira and his family healing and mm -hmm. for God's presence they're, they're pretty frightened of yeah. they had, as of 15 months ago they didn't have anything else if the experimental thing didn't work they didn't know what else to do for right. so maybe something new has come up in the last 15 months Lord we pray for entire God's holy state other go before the Lord in prayer. God, we rejoice in the way that you work in this world. We rejoice at your provision for people. The way you demonstrate your love in our lives by answering prayer. Thank you for answering our prayers for Mark. And 
we got that job with the same company that he's working with. We pray that this time of transition uh, would be smooth and uneventful. God, we thank you for your provision for him. We pray that you bless him as he moves forward in his career. God, we thank you for birthdays, and we thank you for Annika's birthday in particular, and that she got to FaceTime with her grandparents. And uh, thank you, God, for um, everything that you're doing in Annika's life and in the life of her family. Thank you, God. God, we thank you for the vaccine and that uh, many of us have been or are on a path to be fully vaccinated. We thank you for uh, several people in our congregation uh, were vaccinated this week, including Ruthie, uh, and she now awaits her second shot. My, my own parents are now days away from full vaccination uh, since they received their second shot. So we do, we do thank you, God, for the vaccine for everybody who's involved uh, and making sure that that vaccine gets into as many arms as possible. And God, we, we thank you uh, for uh, Tracy and for Stephen and, and the fact that they're going to uh, celebrate a wedding ceremony with a larger uh, array of guests than they were able to do last year. We thank you for the shower that uh, Ruth was able to attend for, for her. And we just, we pray for your continued blessing on their their marriage. And God, many of us uh, knew that something uh, was happening on 724 on uh, the other day uh, because of the many, many cars that were uh, suddenly passing by the church uh, on the detour. And apparently Barbara uh, was able to understand uh, firsthand that uh, some sort of accident or mishap had occurred. And we do pray for all those who were involved in that accident. God, we, we don't know uh, what the condition of those involved was, but we know that there were ambulances present. So we pray, God, for uh, the physical safety and maybe recovery of those uh, who were involved in that. And we also give you thanks and um, give you thanks and grateful, we, with grateful hearts, we appreciate the work of those who are first responders who are on the scene and doing what they do um, for the victims of that accident. Thank you, God. God, we thank you that uh, Sherry is improving and also that Grant is improving. Uh, we pray for a continued uh, abatement of their symptoms, uh, that their taste, sense of taste would fully return um, so that food has some flavor again. That would be nice. Uh, we pray for everybody who is uh, doing the long haul with COVID. And uh, we pray, God, that you would uh, bring to them uh, complete healing and recovery. And we pray for Linda, who had that uh, surgery uh, about a week and a half ago two weeks ago, and we thank you that uh, she is continuing to recover. We do pray, God, as she awaits the results of those tests, that you would help uh, all involved in her care to be uh, patient and to look to you uh, for the recovery, the ongoing recovery process. And we lift to you, Ira, um, God, as it seems like perhaps his lymphoma has returned we pray for the continuing treatment of that disease. God, we pray that you would raise up uh, treatment uh, plans for Ira. Thank you for your work in his life. And we pray, God, that he would know uh, that he would see healing, that he would see recovery, that he would see, see a sense of peace and wholeness even in the midst of sickness. God, and that he would know that all of that comes from you. And we pray for Cheryl, who is mourning the loss of her mother at this time and for the possible passing of her father. We pray, God, that she would, we would help her to uh, mourn well for her mom and also uh, appreciate and give thanks and be grateful for the time, whatever time she has left with her dad. Thank you, God, for two lives that are uh, well-lived and long. 
pray for many more days for the show. Father. God, thank you for all the ways that you're working in our lives. We haven't mentioned all of them today. We would be here forever if we did that. But you know our needs even when we haven't articulated them in front of other people. You know our needs even when we haven't spoken them to you. And you are already working in every way on the needs that we have, even the ones that we don't know about ourselves. So thank you, God, for all of that. And we lift every prayer spoken today, whether they were spoken by me up here in the pulpit or spoken in the hearts of those assembled here or spoken in the hearts of those who are watching online. We offer all of those prayers to you in the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not. share in our benediction, which is a responsive benediction, and we'll find it printed in your bulletin. Go in peace, and God's peace will go with you.